So it seems that I've um, woke up in a bit of an analytic mood. Um, yeah, I've got to make myself a brew. Put the heating on because it's absolutely freezing. This is why I got this on. <laughs> waiting for it to warm up a bit so I've got back in bed. But um, yeah, I've just been thinking while I've been making a brew. Um, how should we be questioning how we're taught to think? Um, especially on, on my sort of um, experiences with mental illness and how it made me behave, uh, my life choices. Um, should we be questioning how we teach people? Um, because more and more that I think about it, the more my life was dictated by the way I was taught to think. Um, and I've got the evidence and the proof and I've done the experiments on myself and it's come out that yeah it was the way I was taught that was stopping me having a life that I, I should have had stopping me from being the person I should have been um, it was because I was taught to please other people um, and not focus on my own self, my own self-worth, my own dreams and aspirations. It was all involving other people and how they could make me happy and how I could find happiness and love in them. I um, was always searching for it in other people. I never knew I should find it in myself. I was never taught that. Um, and it did, well, it has dictated how my life has played out. Um on many aspects, on my ability to learn, on my ability to have a life, make the right choices, make the right decisions for myself. <laughs> you know, and should we be actually looking into this on a wider scale, you know, on many aspects of mental illness and behavioural problems, you know? Um... It's like my friend Heather, she she was brought up in a, a regimental type setting. Her mum and dad um, both had time in the army. Her dad was a narcissist. <laughs> um, very bad narcissist. Um, and yeah, that regimental setting, that upbringing for her, it gave her problems. How to function, how to think, how to act, how to behave. Um, on every decision that she made, it, it, there was an impact from it, you know, even up to this day. It was only since I've started going around and talking to her about my experiences and, you know, the puzzle pieces have been slipping into place nicely. Um, you know, why she does certain things, you know, why she thinks certain things and has anxiety attacks over stupid things at home, you know, that she does on her own, for her own benefit and things. It's like she always thought that she had to be up at a certain time and be dressed and, and ready for the day. Um, even though she might be be poorly or tired or, you know, doesn't want to get up and, you know, um, even to the food that she eats, you know, because she was never allowed to eat certain foods or uh, uh, allowed to eat at a certain time. It was always having to ask permission. She feels guilty for eating. Um, she's, she, she had a love-hate relationship with food, um, you know, it's, it's one of those, it affects, it affected her on such different aspects, even though <laughs> her parents have, have now passed away, you know, um, those voices from her dad are still there in her head, still telling her that she's a failure, that, you know, that she's not allowed to do this or she shouldn't be doing that. And this is it. This is the internal voices that we get to hear. Um, the negative voices of other people, other people's opinions and other people's beliefs that are forced on us, that we make our own, um, our own beliefs about ourselves that aren't true. You know, we really, really, really should be looking into how we teach each other to think and behave. Because it is having a bad impact um, on a lot of people. I mean, 
people are always wondering about mental illness and where it comes from. On my, from my experience, it comes from my upbringing. That's exactly where my mental illness comes from. It's not because of me. It's not because my brain has been born. Has been, you know, when I was born, my brain was structured for that. No, my brain learned to be the way it is or the way it was. It's not like that anymore. Um, because I found out, I found the trick. It's because I've been taught wrong. I've been taught to be a people pleaser. I've been taught to put myself last. I've been taught that I've got no worth, no self-worth. I've been taught that nobody loves me, that I'm not worthy of love. Um, when in fact it's the complete opposite, you know? Um, and I know it's, it's all working, all this stuff that I've done, because normally I'd be in tears <laughs> through this part of the conversation. Um, but no, it shows that I'm healing and it's healing because I found my self-worth. I'm healing because I found love for myself. I've heal I'm healing because I understand now that what I was taught about myself was completely wrong. Um, and so many people are taught the same. So many people. Um, I know people that have been taught how to value themselves. Um, how to love themselves by a loving family and their lives have turned out amazing and I know people that have been taught the same as me and their lives have turned out shit and they can't understand why you know they try everything they possibly can within their knowledge of what they've been taught how to move forward and they still can't and they don't know why and they think it's their problem. They think they're, they're, the, they're the fault. No, they're not. You're not the fault. You've been taught how to be that way. So you need to find a way to unlearn all that shit. And relearn a better way of being. Finding yourself for who you really are. And accepting yourself for who you really are. And not feeling guilty for being who you really are. Um, and stop being controlled about with by those that mentally abuse you I mean sometimes it can only take a look from somebody and they can make you behave in a way you know one look from my gran and I used to fucking jump you know I'd be there ready what do you want me to do what have I done wrong <gasps> what uh, you know panic 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 you know and that was just from a fucking look words they cut me deep and <laughs> uh, not anymore not anymore because I won't allow it I won't allow that because I know it's wrong and it, I know that that's not a healthy way to think. You know, we always go on about healthy food and not smoking and things like that. But what about our brain? That is our main fucking computer, you know. That is our number one function of the rest of our body. <laughs> that's the number one functioning organism that dictates the rest of our lives. And what we put into society is... is as a living human being, as part of the collective, as part of society. Surely we should be making sure that what we're teaching the young is beneficial for their future. <laughs> because what we've been teaching them so far, on the majority, has been wrong, very wrong. And that wrongness is kept up through society, through how we're governed, you know, they know about keeping people stuck in their own heads, they know about it, that's what's going on at the moment, everything's doom and gloom, it's triggering your fear response to blame other people and, and you know, blame your neighbour, blame yourself, blame the dog, blame the cat, blame the weather, blame this, blame that, well it's not, it's the individual people that are running this country making us think that we're the problem when we're not and they're just gaining all the money from it you know when you start to be aware of what's going on with how people actually manipulate you through your own fucking mind and I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that I mean a, a lot of my theories that, they, that they've hit spot on the nail right on the head um and it's nothing to do with aliens and shit like that. I mean, I do believe in aliens. It's stupid that, you know, we live in a, a, a universe so big that we're the only life forms. Don't be daft, you know? Don't be stupid. <laughs> um, 
that that's that's just the way that we've been made to think that you know there's nothing outside of earth you know we are the only life forms and that is a narcissistic way of thinking you know it's it's stupid that, that to think that there's only one way of being and thinking and doing and you should be when there's not there's so many different ways of being and doing you know society as a whole shows it we have so many different aspects of mental illness you know we have people that have none up to the people that are severely mentally disabled you know there is a wide spectrum and it's dealing with the individual not uh, a mean number you know um means testing you know what that is i mean i learned this in, in science and through through oh some maths here we go <laughs> some maths that i've learned means testing you um you know you take all the numbers separate numbers how many people are poor how many people have a job how many people are rich and you don't actually take those individual numbers you you make them into a mean number which is like an average of all those numbers put together and it comes out with a completely different number it's it's just twisting numbers that's all it is it, and people get lost in the numbers on the pieces of paper because it, it is it's just trying to balance that out um, and hiding the truth through numbers that just make no well they make no difference in people's lives because there's people that are on the very poor list that that get bumped up to being oh it's okay because the rest of us are doing okay we'll forget about that person that isn't doing okay um because everybody else is well that's what the numbers say on on this piece of paper anyway yeah so why should we deal with that there's no point you know everybody's doing fine <laughs> it's giving a false sense of what's going on in this world um and it all needs to stop we need to be seeing the individual person individual brain the individual life form that we are um and not being ignored and pushed under the carpet pretending that everything's okay when it's not just so people at the top can earn more money and stay in power you know um this is my thoughts and feelings anyway and i've waffled on for nearly 13 minutes <laughs> so yeah um yeah we really should be looking into how we're taught to think because it does have an effect on our lives on a big scale, you know, especially when we get into adulthood. Anyway, I shall say goodbye and stop waffling on <laughs> more, more ramblings of a mad woman. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and if you stay to the end, um, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, love you lots. See you later. Bye bye.